Hey gang, so now we're to Voronoi diagrams. And I do have some other videos on here for you to also go through that I think will help you with this. This is kind of a new concept for everybody. And so um, sometimes it's better to hear it from uh, someone else other than me as well, to hear it from two people. So my notes follow um, the video um, that I'm going to do here, but also the other ones, they follow that one as well. So a Voronoi diagram, we're going to use this when we're city planning. And so they're actually really easy. They follow perpendicular bisectors because really that's all we're going to do on these maps and these grids is just perpendicular bisector between points. And if you look, you can kind of see A and B, A and D right here. This is the perpendicular bisector. It goes right through the midpoint and it's the perpendicular to AD. Okay, so a Voronoi diagram is a set of sites also known as points. You're used to calling them points on a graph. We call them sites. So A, B, C, and D, you would call these points on a graph. They would also be known as sites. So let's draw an arrow and we're gonna say these are also called sites. Okay, okay the sites is a collection of what we're gonna call regions. Now I'm gonna grab my highlighter and I'm just going to highlight one of them. This right here would be known as a region. That highlighted part right there would be a region. This right here would be a region. This down here would be another region. And yes, that over there on the other side, this would be another region. Okay, so there's lots of regions. So you've got sites and you've got regions. Each site has a um, each site has a surrounding region such that the points in the region are closer to a site than any other site, meaning all the all the um I don't want to say this. Point D, every single every single site inside this yellow is closer to D. Every single point in this region is closest to D. Every single point in pink in this pink area up here is closest to site A. Every single point in this area right here in this region is closest to C. And every single point in this region right here is closest to B. All right, so we did size, we did regions. These are also, we call these, I'm going to write this up because I forgot to. We call these regions. Sometimes we call them cells. Most of the time we call them regions, though. Now the edges. What are the edges? These lines right here, these are called the edges. Edges are the perpendicular bisectors that divide the regions up, okay? And those are what we're constantly trying to find, okay? Where they meet, P and Q right here, those form vertexes. Those are gonna be called our vertexes. Let's label our edges right here. These are gonna be called our edges. And that's pretty much what a Voronoi diagram is. Where do you see these? Um, there's a Pixar video, if I can remember, I'll show it to you guys. But this, if you kind of look at it, you can actually see it right here. If you look at a giraffe, next time you look at a giraffe, it's a Voronoi diagram. Look at the markings on a giraffe. It is a Voronoi diagram. Look at the shell of a turtle. It's a Voronoi diagram. It's amazing. You will see them, now that you know what they're called, you will see them all over nature. It's so, 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 so cool. All right, so we're gonna start off with just two points out here. And I know that it's super tiny, it's hard to see. It's very difficult for me to see it. A lot of times I have to zoom in because I can't see the points. Okay, here's what I've got. I'm gonna write them over here because I have to write them bigger so I can see it. So I'm giving you two points. That is what they are, negative three, three, and five, one. What is the perpendicular bisector of AB? That's all we wanna know is what the perpendicular bisector of AB is. So in order to find that, we're gonna do the midpoint, right? So let's do the midpoint. So we're gonna do negative three plus five over two, and we're gonna do three plus one over two. 
All right, well, let's see. That's going to be um, negative 3 plus 5 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, let's go ahead and graph that. So over here, this is 5, so this is 1, 1, 2. That's the midpoint. Now let's find the slope of AB. That's going to be 1 minus 3 over 5 minus a minus 3. So that's going to be negative 2 over 8. So the slope is negative 1 fourth. The perpendicular slope, we'll flip it and switch it so it'll be 4, right? So we're going to do right here, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. I'm going to use a ruler. You, if you don't have a ruler and you're watching this at home, try and go find just something. You can use a straight edge. 1, 2, 3, 4, back 1. You definitely are going to want some kind of straight edge. All right, so we are going to graph this. I'm going to put this. I'm going to call this line L. And I believe it said, what is the perpendicular bisector of AB? So I want to actually do the line. It wants to know the line. So y minus 2 equals 4 times x minus 1. I'm going to simplify that and get y equals 4 x minus 2. There's the equation of the perpendicular bisector L. All right, so if I was doing a Voronoi diagram, this would be the edge, and it divided it into two different regions. Now, we don't usually have just two. Normally, when we do a Voronoi, we have a minimum of three. This would be easy if we just had two because it's super easy. Here we go. We're going to do one with three, three sites instead of just two. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going, I think I can see these pretty good. I can see negative six, seven, two, five, and negative six, three. And what I want to do is I want to create a Voronoi diagram. I need to find the perpendicular bisector between each of these sites, and then I want to graph it. Now I have to be careful. You have to, and we'll actually draw it, and then we'll just scribble out. Like if you do this in pen, just know your paper's going to be a little messy. It's better if you do it in pencil, but it's okay. Once we do it in pen, it'll make sense. So let's just start with A and B. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the midpoint. So we're going to put A, B here, and we're going to find the midpoint. So let's put midpoint, and let's find that midpoint. So we're going to do negative 6 plus 2 over 2, and 7 plus 5 over 2. So that's going to give us negative 2, 6. And then we want to find the slope of AB. So let's see, the slope of AB is going to be... Oh, I thought I already had that worked. I didn't. I have to work it. Okay, it means I have to look. 7 minus 3 over negative 6 minus a minus 6. Oh, I don't really have to do that one, do I? It's a vertical line. Hello. Well, anyway, it'll be 4 over 0, which is undefined, right? Well, anyway, when I flip it, the slope will be, the slope perpendicular will be 0. I wasn't really looking at that. Okay, let me do negative 2. Where did I get negative 2? 6, 4 divided by 2. I did it backwards, didn't I? No, 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 no. I wrote it backwards. I did my... Oh, I'm so sorry. I was doing a different one. I was looking at AC was what I did right there. Y'all are probably like, wait, this thing, which one did you do? Oh, okay, let me, let me fix that. Okay. I'm just going to erase my top ones there. Sorry, y'all. Okay, A was negative 6, and B was negative 6. So negative 6 plus negative 6 gives me negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. And then this was 7 plus 3, which is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. A, B, 10 divided by divided by 2, which is 5. 
Okay, so we're going to do negative 6. No, that's still not right. Why do I keep missing this? I was looking at my notes. Negative 6, 2. It's a negative 3. Negative 3. Oh, it's missing down here. Negative 3. Negative 3. Oh, can we just start this video over? No, I'm going to keep going. I'm going with it. 4 divided by 2 is 2. I'm going with it, even though I know. Okay, I don't want to get that in there. Okay, negative 6, 1, 2. There we go. Perpendicular bisector. This is a vertical line, so that means a perpendicular bisector is going to go this way. Here's what I'm going to do. My first four annoy, I'm going to do a dashed line, and I'm going to do it about like that. I'm not going to go all the way across the page because I know it's not really going to go across the page, and you'll learn more as we do it. I'm just going to kind of dotted line right there. I don't draw this line here. I don't connect those. I just draw the perpendicular bisector. I'm wanting to find where do all three of these perpendicular bisectors intersect. There's one point where all three of them are going to intersect. Okay, so now let's do B, C. B, C. All right, I'm not going to look at my notes because apparently my notes aren't always right. Okay, B is at negative 6 plus 2 over 2 and negative 3 plus 5 over 2. So let's see, that'll be negative 4 over 2 will be negative 2, and that'll be 2 over 2, which will be 1. Negative 2, 1. Okay, they did get that right. So that'll be negative 2 up 1, uh, negative 1, 2, up 1. Okay, so that's going to be like right here. That looks about right, doesn't it? Looking at these two points right here, that looks like about the midpoint. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to find the slope of BC. All right, negative 3 minus 5 over negative 6 minus 2. That's negative 8 over negative 8, so that's 1. So the perpendicular slope, flip it and switch it, so that's going to be negative 1. And I'm just going to use my rise over run on this. So that would be up one and back one. So it's going to be right here. Look at that. It's going to be right on that line. Okay. So now I'm going to use my root. I'm going to actually go back one and back one. I'm going to put it one there, down one and back one. So it would be right there. Now, see how I hit that vertex right there? Like that's where this line hit that line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this over here so I can actually do this. I'm not going to draw up here. I'm just going to go from right here. I'm just going to draw down like that because I know these two lines are already meeting right there that means that's probably the vertex I'm gonna guess this other line is gonna go right here like that but I need to make sure I don't know it's, it's gonna have to be the midpoint so I need to figure out that midpoint right there so let's find AC okay let's find the midpoint let me move that up just a little bit so y'all can see a little better so let's see, that's going to be negative 6 plus 2 over 2 and 7 plus 5 over 2. So let's see, that'll be negative 4 divided by, negative 4 divided by 2 will be negative 2. 12 divided by 2 will be 6. There's my negative 2, 6 that I got a while ago. So negative 1, 2, and then all the way up to 6 will be right here, negative 2. Six. All right. One, two, right there. Yeah, it looks about right. All right, so now let's find the slope of A, C. Now, I pretty much know it's already going to go through the, but I'm still going to do the math. All right, the slope of A, C. Seven minus five over two minus, is that a negative six? Yeah, minus a minus 6 equals 2 over 8, so that's 1 fourth. So the perpendicular slope would be negative 4. All right, so I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. Is that right? Hmm. Let me go backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, over, oh, I can't see these lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Okay, then I'm going to go the other way. 
One, two, three, four, over one. Okay. So I can connect all these. Using my ruler. And once you hit that vertex, you stop. You don't, don't keep going. So kind of the rule is, and we're going to write this down here. You, once you're drawing a line, once you, I'm, I'm drawing the perpendicular bisector between A and C. Once I start drawing the bisector and I'm getting closer to another site, like once I go across this, I'm actually closer to B, I stop drawing it. That means I'm closer to B and I don't do that. I'm drawing the perpendicular bisector between A and B. Once I hit the vertex, my perpendicular bisector is now closer to C, right? I stop. Once you start drawing the part of the edge that is closer to the third site, then the other two, you stop drawing it, okay? So that means like this right here, I don't want to have that right here. And there are my three regions. Three sites are pretty easy to do. So let's let's put that note on here. Let's say, let's say remove the part of the edge. Remove the part of the edge. And this is super important. We're going to highlight this in everything. Um, and we'll say the line, and you may want to say the perpendicular bisector line, that is closer to the third site than the other two sites in its name. Than the other two sites in its name. Meaning, if I'm working with AC and I'm doing the perpendicular bisector of AC, the minute I start getting closer to B, I'm no longer talking about AC, now I'm talking about B. So I don't want to do that. And let me show you what my notes look like on that one. So see how I'm drawing it? The minute I do my perpendicular bisector and I start getting closer to C, I need to scribble that off, okay? And then once I do my perpendicular bisector of AC and I start going this way, I need to scribble this off. Once I do my perpendicular bisector here of BC, once I start going across it, I have to scribble it off. Okay. Uh, and let me, I have a highlighter somewhere. All right, I'm going to put that there. All right, moving on. Okay. <coughs> okay, so this one, let me move this down a little bit. So the graph shows a partially drawn Voronoi diagram with points A, B, and C. And here's what we want to do. If D has that ordered pair, if the vertex of the Voronoi diagram, find the equation of the third edge of the diagram and complete the diagram. So basically, we've got these two right here. We need to do the missing edge. So here's what I look at. There is an edge between A and B already. There's an edge between A and C, correct? Where is the missing edge? Well, there's a missing edge right here between B and C. So I need to find the missing edge between B and C. So pause your video if you're watching it at home, and let's find the missing edge between B and C. See if you can do it. All right, here we go. I'm going to find the midpoint between B and C. So the midpoint between B and C is going to be four, uh, 7 plus 4 over 2, and then 4 plus 1 over 2. I guess I should have labeled that. So I'm showing B is at 4 comma 4, and C is at 7 comma 1. Those are the order pairs I'm using. Okay, so my midpoint is at 11 over 2 and 5 over 2. So it's kind of at an lucky point. Once I know that, so I'm going to go, um, I guess I could, well, I guess from there, I don't really need to, like, I don't really need to drop it because it's going to be kind of hard. Let's find the slope of BC. 1 minus 4 over 7 minus 4. negative 3 over 3, so the slope is negative 1. 
the perpendicular slope would be 1. All right, so let's write the equation of the line. y minus 5 over 2 equals 1 times x minus 11 over 2. All right, so y minus 5 over 2 equals 1x minus 11 over 2. I'm going to add 5 halves to each side, and here's what I'm going to get. y equals 1x. Um, actually, minus 3. Because that will end up being plus 5 over 2 when you, when you move that over. 11 plus 5 is 6. 6 over 2 is 3. Yeah, so get that. So if you graph that, if you like made a table and kind of graphed it, this would be, since negative 3 is down here, it was a little bit harder to do. So let's see, if x was 3, y would be 0. So if I went over 1, 2, 3, it would be 0. And I really just need a couple of points, right? If I did x is 4, that would be 1. I just need a couple of points. I could do 5, 2. And the only reason is because that midpoint is something crazy. Okay, I'm going to graph some of these points. 3, 0, over 4, up 1, over 5, up 2 would be about right here. Okay, so to graph that edge, remember, you don't graph these right here because those are closer. So I'm just going to use those to guide me. I want to start at the vertex, and I just want to go out. I don't want to graph these. In fact, I'm going to actually just kind of put my liquid paper over that. There we go. And there is the missing edge of my Boronoi diagram. Now I'm going to highlight it just because that was the piece that was missing. There it is. Now remember, the reason I don't put this over here is because once I start coming across here, I'm closer to A. And I don't want to do that. I only want to do on this side over here. So this is my edge. All right, that's pretty good, y'all. Let's keep going. All right, how to add points to a Voronoi diagram. So start with a cell that contains a new site. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep going. So first off, if we're going to add, add a point, we're going to draw a perpendicular bisector. And we're going to start off, we're going to add a perpendicular bisector. We're going to construct a segment of the perpendicular bisector that is within the existing cell. When the segment reaches the new edge, we're going to create a vertex. The vertex is the dot where they meet. Okay, for each new cell that touches the vertex, every time we touch the new vertex, we have to stop and we have to construct a perpendicular bisector between the new site and the existing site to create another new vertex. It takes a little bit of time. We have to repeat this until we don't touch any new vertices. We have to remove segments of the edges that exi exist in the new cells. Okay, it's the same thing we've been doing, but we have to do it a whole bunch of times. So here we go. Get your rulers ready. Given the existing Voronoi ABC, we want to add the site D at 6, 3. Okay, so we've been given this. We want to add the site D, which is over here. All right, so on this, if I remember right, I am going to give you a couple of things. I don't want to, um, yeah, I want to go ahead and give you this. So I'm going to give you this. I'm going to say negative 6, 5. I want you to graph negative 6 and then go up 5. Negative 6, 5 right here. And then I want, I want to give you negative 4, 11, negative 4, Four up to 11 up here and then I'm going to give you 0 
negative 1. Sorry, my son is being really loud. 0, negative 1. And what this is, this is the existing Voronoi diagram. This is what we're starting with. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect these points right here. This was not on the original. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And we're going to say this is actually what was here. This was the existing Voronoi. And then, oh, we're going to add the point D to this. So originally, this was my site. Maybe these were new Wendy's, or maybe these were new Brahms, or Chick-fil-A's. Everybody likes Chick-fil-A's and Cane's. These were our new Cane's, and, oh, somebody came new to the town and said, oh, I want to add a new one over here. And it was like, oh, if you add one over here, now the regions have to be redrawn. Or maybe it's a school, and now we got to change up the new zones, because, you know, that's what we're always about doing. So, since this is in the zone with C, it's in the region with C, we start where it interferes. It interferes with C. So we're going to have to come over here, and we're going to have to say, okay, C and D are in the same region. Let's find the perpendicular bisector between C and D. So, midpoint, C and D. I can't see them very well. So it's 6, 3. So we're going to do 6 plus negative 2 over 2, and we're going to do 3 plus 7 over 2. So my midpoint is going to be 4 over 2, which is 2, 10 over 2, which is 5. Let's find the slope of CD. So that's going to be, let's see if I can see that one. That's going to be 7. I'm going to do 7 minus 3 over negative 2 minus 6. So that's 4 over negative 8, negative 1 half. So the perpendicular slope will be a positive 2. Okay, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to plot that 2, 5. I'm gonna, and actually, I'm going to do this in a separate color. I'm going to do it in red. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go, let's see, 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. And I kind of look. Does that look about right? Yeah. Now the slope is 2. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, and over 1. Up 2 and over 1. Okay, so I'm going to draw my line through this region, and I only worry about when I actually touch another edge. And I don't touch another edge until way down there, right? So it goes all the way up, separating this, and it goes all the way to here. And I stop right here because it touches this. So there's a little bit of a problem when I get to there. Okay, let me turn that off. So when I get to here, that's where the issue comes in. So once you touch this edge, this tells you where you have to go next. The next problem comes in here with A. So now I need to look at D. In fact, I need to put a D right here. I need to go from D to A. I need to figure out the perpendicular bisector from A to D and see what happens with this edge. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to say what happens with A and D. All right, so let's find the midpoint between A and D. So I'm going to do 6 plus negative 8 over 2, and then 3 plus 1 over 2. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2 will be negative 1. 4 over 2 will be 2. So negative 1, 2. So I'm going to come over here, and let's see, here's um, there's 0. So I'm going to do negative 1. Where am I at? I lost place. Negative 1, up 2. Negative 1, up 1. Uh, negative 1, 2, yeah. Negative 1, 1. I can't see it very, 2. So it looks kind of like here. 1, 2. Like right there. That looks about right. Okay, so there's that one. Now I need to find my slope. So let's find the slope of AD. And we're going to do 3 minus 1 over... 6 minus a minus 8, which is going to be 2 over 14, which is 1 over 7. 
the perpendicular slope will be negative 7. All right, so I'm coming from this point. I'm going to do it backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and back 1. Okay, so I'm going from here to here. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. See that point right there? I'm actually going right through that point. I'm a little bit off. I should be going right through that point. I need to make sure I'm right on that line. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. But up here, when I draw up here, I'm actually closer to C, right? This is site C. So I don't need to draw up here. I'm really only drawing the line down here. So I'm going to put my point there. I'm really only drawing the line down there. And what's going to vanish is this little piece right here that is closer to D as it comes through. Oh, and you know what? As I draw that, do I hit any vertices? Hit any other edges? I don't. Which means that's all I had to do. Because I drew this one, I'm done, I'm done. I didn't hit any more edges when I drew this little piece right here. Now you might be, but what about up here? Well, remember we didn't draw this up here. We didn't draw that up here. So I don't have to worry about that. So yeah, so that one, I should be pretty good. All right. So we'll go to the next one. Let's look at number 53. In the figure, B is 7, negative 2, C is 5, 2, and D is 8, 2. Divide the plane into three regions, which contains the points closest to each of the sites. Add one more site, A, at 1, 0, and then identify the Voronoi cell for A. Hence, identify the closest site to point K, which is going to be at 4, and then negative uh, 1.5. Okay, so this one actually isn't too bad. So let me write what we've got here. We've got C is at 5, 2, and we've got A is, let me put an A here, A is at 1, 0. I'm just writing down so I can see what we've got. All right, A is at 1, 0. Divide the plane into three regions, 1, 2, 3. We've got three regions, which contains the point closest to uh, the other sites, add one more site A at 110. So we're adding this one right here. And then identify uh, the, new, the new cell. So if I'm adding this, it's in the cell with C. So that means I need to do the perpendicular bisector between A and C, right? Because it shares a cell with C. So pause your video. See if you can do the perpendicular bisector between A and C. So let's find that midpoint. So 1 plus 5 divided by 2, 0 plus 2 divided by 2. That's going to be 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's going to be at 3, 1. Oh, this one's a lot easier to do. I can read this one. And then I need to find the slope of AC. So that's going to be 0 minus 2 over 1 minus 5, so that's negative 2 over negative 4, so that's 1 half, so the perpendicular slope would be negative 2. All right, so here we go. 1, 2, and then backwards 1. 1, 2, and then backwards 1. All right, so remember when we draw this, we only have to go until we hit an edge. Once we hit an edge, Then we have to connect it. When we hit an edge, we have to stop, and then we have to look at what we're hitting. All right, so we're going to come to here. And then we have to stop right to there. So that came out. And we hit this one, which touches B, so we need to do the perpendicular bisector between A and B now, because this edge, if we were to keep drawing, we'd be in B's territory, and so we need to figure out A and B. So now let's do A and B. 
All right, so let me put B up here. It helps. It really helps me to have them a little bit bigger so I can see them. All right, A and B. So 1 plus 7 over 2 and 0 plus negative 2 over 2. So that's going to be 8 over 2 is 4. And then that's going to be negative 2 over 2 is going to be negative 1. And then the slope of AB is going to be, let's see, negative 2 minus 0 over 7 minus 1. That will be negative 2 over uh, 6, which will be negative 1 third. The perpendicular slope will be 3. So let's see, 4, negative 1. Oh, imagine that. There it is. And then the slope is 3. So 1, 2, 3. Um, oh, let's go up. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. So I'm going to draw it down. Now, I don't want to go up because if I went up, I'd be in C's region. So I'm just going to draw it down. And when I draw it down, I don't hit any other edges. But what do I need to mark off? What do you notice? You notice in region A how we have this line right here. So I do need to mark this line off. That line shouldn't be there. And then it's like, okay, we're good. We don't have any more. We've added on the new site. A has been added. Now, we want to know K is at 4, negative 1.5. 4, negative 1.5, hence identify the closest site to K. I'm going to put K in here in red. 4, negative 1.5. So 1.5 is going to be like right here. That's K. Okay, which site is closest to K? Site B. So we're going to say closest to K, to, to K would be B. All right, working on, working on. All right, we have just a couple more to go. And we are almost there. Okay, so on example 54, or actually on your paper, I think it's example 46. I just now realized that my example numbers are off on your paper and my paper. That's okay. I think this is example 46 on yours. Sorry about that. I did not realize that until just now. Okay. Uh, given the existing Voronoi diagram for sites A, B, C, and D, we want to add site E. Okay, so we're going to add site E. So here we go. We've got this, and we are adding this site right here. I'm, I'm going to actually highlight the site that we're adding. It does help me. Now, another thing for me that helps me is um, to have my sites on here a little bit bigger. But that's okay. So since E is connecting with D, you're going to do the perpendicular bisector here, and then you're going to do you're going to see where it goes on. Now, um, well, I guess we'll just do it. I was trying to decide if I was going to actually do all this one, but since it's a video, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So here we go. If you've already know how to do this, if you want to just fast forward through this, feel free. So let's start with the midpoint. We're going to do two plus six over two and 3 plus 3 over 2, that's going to give us 4, 3. We're going to do the slope of ED. That's going to give us 3 minus 3 over 6 minus 2. That's going to give us 0 over 4, which is going to be 0. So we're going to do 4, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Perpendicular slope uh, is going to go this way. We're going to go until we hit edges. Now, we hit an edge right here, and we hit an edge right here. Unfortunately for us, we hit two edges. That means we've got to do the edge that hits with A, and we have to do the edge that hits down here with C. So I'm going to start off with um, EA up here. So I'm going to do the midpoint. And I'm going to do 2 plus 0 over 2 and 3 plus 9 over 2. 
that's going to give me 1 6 and then I'm going to do the slope remember if this is too fast because I've, I've already done this so I'm just kind of doing it real fast I'm going to do 3 minus 9 over 2 minus 0 you can pause the video which is negative 3 the perpendicular slope we're going to flip it and switch it so that's going to give me 1 3rd so I'm going to go over to 1 I'm going to go up to 6 and I'm looking between E and A that does look like it's about the perpendicular my slope is up 1 over 1 2 3 imagine that it goes right there so I'm going to try and graph that a little bit I'm going to go down one and back one two three it's going to hit right there on that edge okay and as it hits this edge right here that means it's touching B the edge of B so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to need to fix that okay so I'm going to go I'm just going to keep going around and I'm going to do I'm going to do EC next which is this one down here I'm going to look from E to C because remember we touched that one right there so I'm going to do my midpoint again here and I'm going to do 0 plus 2 over 2 and negative 3 plus 3 over 2 which gives me 1 comma 0 and then I'm going to do my slope of EC which is going to be 3 plus 3 over 2 minus 0 which is going to give me 3 my perpendicular slope will be negative 1 third so I'm going to go over 1 up 0 I'm going to go back 1 and then 1 2 3 down 1 1 2 3 it's going to hit about right there let's see if I can graph that one I thought that one hit yeah I've got that one off a little bit let's see if I can get that one fixed I don't think I went over far enough okay over oh I did it wrong I did that one wrong when I graphed well you can see where all the little arrows you can make on these bore noise man they they can cost you cost you dearly this is over one up zero and then down one one two three so it's right there so up one one two three so it's right there okay so it's gonna be this right here edge to edge I'm gonna stop right there on that edge and I'm gonna stop right there on that edge now because I already kind of know what's gonna happen there it's gonna be a vertical line but I'll go ahead and put it I'll put B E because now I've hit B and so I need to do E to B halfway between these two is gonna be right here I can just oh sorry I can just see that and it's gonna be a vertical line it's gonna go right here I don't have to do that now if I wanted to do it I could say that the midpoint if it helps you just to see that would be negative 6 plus 2 over 2 and then 3 plus 3 over 2 so that would be negative 2 comma 3 which is that point right there and then the slope would be 0 and so the vertical line would be the perpendicular so then I just have to figure out what do I need to get rid of all this in the middle the region in the middle is actually everything in the middle is closest to E and there it is so I have five regions one two all this down here three four and five in the middle all right moving right along and the last thing we have is um, the nearest which one's this this is the neighbor interpolation okay so this one's pretty straightforward all right so on this one you'll actually like this one because it's really short so when you have a Bornoi diagram one of the things they like to do is have you look at it and you have to interpret the data that you're getting so if you're asked for data about a new site because that's what's going to happen you're going to have this you're going to construct a Bornoi and then they're going to give you data about it and you have to decide information about the site if you're asked for data about a new site if the new site is within one cell of the data you use the data from that cell if the data is on the edge of that cell if it's on the edge you average the two cells 
on those edges. If the new site is on a vertex, you average all the adjacent cells. Okay, super easy to understand. Let's take this and we're going to do a Voronoi diagram on this, okay? And then we're going to use the information here to come up with that. Now, what I want you to do is to pause your video and I want you to come up with the Voronoi diagram. Now, I'm about to just pop my answer up here because um, I feel like at this point we have done so many of them that you should be able to do it. But I am going to hide my answers because I don't want you to see my answers on this, but I do want you to see the Voronoi diagram. So pause your video. Bam, here comes the answers. All right, so I created my Voronoi, and here's what it looks like. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit so you can see it. It goes pretty straightforward. This is what my Voronoi looks like. I'll highlight my edges, edge, edge, and edge. Here's BA, AC, and BC. Now, the first question says, what is the temperature at 1,4? So you come over here and you look, you go over 1, and the, the thing to note on this that stumped me, these are going by, like, this is 1, so over 1 and up 4 is right here. At 1,4, which region am I in? I'm in region C. If I'm in region C, I need to look, and the temperature is 75 degrees. So the answer to that first part is 75 degrees. Okay, 75 degrees. Okay, I wish I could pause my video, but I can't. It won't let me because it, it's cantankerous about life. So the region C would be 75 degrees. Now, what is the temperature at 3, negative 1? Okay, well, hold on, let me do this. So at 3, so I go over to 3, and then I go down to negative 1, and I'm right here. I'm actually on the line. If you're trying to find data and you're on an edge, you will look at the two regions that touch that edge, and you just average it. So I'm at A and B. So I need to look at A and B, and you know what I need to do? I need to simply average A and B. So 84 plus 78, take an average, it's 81. What is the temperature at 2, 0? 2, 0 is right here in the middle at a vertex where you're touching all three regions. You simply average all three. And that's, yeah, that's all you do about neighbor interpolation. All right. Um, other than that, the last page... Um, I have a video on that, and I'm gonna. It's called the toxic weights problem. I'm gonna have you guys watch the video on that because it has animations with it, and it's the only way to watch that is with those animations. I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching.